Hey guys, welcome back to Life with Twinsies. I'm Jasmine. And I'm Charles. Guys, episode five, Woo! Bananas. Mm. Oh my God, this was the best episode. This thing thus was far jumping season. from the start. <laughs> yes. This, ah, it was lit. It was man, lit. It, it was. It was there. It was yes. there. It kept me there. Guys, I cannot believe we are halfway through the season. Man, it's is this is hot already. It, it's been halfway sweet. through. Is this hot? I mean, come on, man. We only five more episodes left, Charles, mm. and it's done. That's ah. it. It's done. Until next like, year. Come on now. Come oh. on. Y'all, but this episode was great. It was great. It was so good, y'all. I had to I had to bring my laptop so I could <laughs> I had there's so much I want to discuss with you guys that I was just like, nah, I, I'm gonna forget if I don't have it in front of me. So I got my notes here. Let's go right in. Let's go in. So we mm. open up Angela's running and she left her sister pad. She's she she, just going. Yeah, she she, she she gave up. She over there smoking <laughs> a cigarette. And Angela's like, What happened? And she's like, Angela, what's going on with you? What's I going on? I tried to keep up with you, you know. I tried. Yeah, so Angela <laughs> finally sits down beside her sister and she's like, hey, I got new information that proves that Ghost is probably innocent. And she she sit there and she's talking about, okay, well if you got if you got evidence, then you you're gonna have to share it with your partners. Well she first she asked you if she shared it with a partner. She said no. So she said, Well you're gonna have to share this for partner. If you know he's if he's innocent, then you have to share the information. Yeah. But, Pat said he's he's a um, he's a loser. He's a liar. He's a cheat. Yeah. But you know if if he if, if he's innocent, then you gotta you gotta put this information. Yeah, out there. you gotta do it. No doubt. Yeah. So uh, from there, look, Silver tells Ghost that there's gonna be an asset forfeiture hearing tomorrow, and he's asking Ghost again, what it could it be in their finances that you know that you're not telling me? And Ghost is assuring him, you know, no Tasha, yeah, hey, no it's it's solid, it's solid. Tasha's Tasha, on top of that. I think he had all the big, all the money business. Right. So they good there, and he said they could be something pulling something called a Rico case. So this asset forfeiture hearing is um, they're going to go over this case and they're going to discuss what was found in his finances that could possibly tie him to the crime. So Angela, she goes in and she sees Mike in the office and you can see that she's kind of second guessing herself on whether she should go in there and have a conversation with Mike. And I'm I telling hear? you, at first I was thinking bad, bad idea. Yeah, bad move. I was thinking, no, don't do that. Don't do that. You're going to tell a killer that you don't think he killed him? I, I, I'm thinking that she suspects Sandoval at this point, but she, anywho, she goes in there and she tells him, she's like, you know, I looked at the surveillance camera footage and we never see Jamie plant the gun and she was, or anyone for that matter, plant the gun. Right. And she's like, I think we need to tell Mock. And he told him, nah, nah, don't tell him, that. We, we're not going to use this. We're not going to use that. They already threw the gun out. So we ain't gonna use this for this piece of evidence. We already got evidence already. We will we will go forward what we got. So we don't even need to tell Mox about this. Yeah. Then Sax comes in and he's all cherry and he's like, "We found a seven figure check from Tommy Egan in his finances, and I bet you it's murder for hire. And Tommy hired him to kill Greg." Nanny Jasmine, that 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 Gaspin has stars right now. They just grab yeah. anything they can to try to hook him up in there. Why? We know, we know, we know he ain't do it. Mm-mm. We know who the killer is. This is the one thing about this show. We know who the killer is. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, it, it's interesting when you have a show when you know more than what they what the characters know. Right. So you're sitting there like, oh no, don't want to be that stupid. But. Yeah. This next scene was really interesting to me where they show Teresi in the workout room with his boy Biscuit uh-huh. and you see uh, Marshall Williams walk in and Teresi's like, you know, wants to have a little talk with him and he's yeah. like, yeah, I heard about your transfer and everything and he's telling him that Ghost and his lawyer is behind it. So Teresi says to Marshall, how would you like to get him booted out of here? And Marshall's just looking at him like he's very interested. Yeah, he's interested in that. Get ready, goes. So Silver goes to talk to Tasha about their finances and the hearing that's scheduled for the next day. And he's asking her again, is there anything in there that I know, need to know about? And Tasha reassures him that we've always done things on the up and up. Silver tells Tasha that he may need to put her on the witness stand to verify everything. And that makes Tasha, Tasha nervous. Yeah, Tasha I mean, liking that. She knows how to handle herself around everybody. Yeah, but, she but, know, but she knows that if she makes any mistakes... Yep. 
that could be her kid. Yes, it's life and death. Yeah, so she's she's scared to make that move right there. So. She's very apprehensive, but you know he reassures her that he has confidence in her that she can handle the situation. Yeah, but you can see that. You can see that they got that look in their eye. Yeah, he, he's trying to make that move. He, he trying to be smooth. Which is that that right there? He's coming on awfully strong. So I guess it's just the physical attraction at this point. Right. Right. But wow, you guys, I'm telling you, if you watch any of our videos, you know that I wasn't feeling the whole Silver Tasha love connection thing. Well, but you can really start to see the you chemistry just, yes. in this episode. Yes. And Silver, I still don't trust him as far as I can throw him. However, he's not as much as a, of an arrogant dick as I thought he was initially. Not, not like Mox. No, he's not like Mox, but... The, in the first episode, they, when he when they first showed him, he came on really strong and he just was a complete turned off. He right. seemed like he was one of them Uncle Tom type brothers. But he's not giving me that anymore. He's more, I mean, he's, he's, he's definitely a smug guy. He's very confident. He's very proud of himself and self-assured. But he's not as Uncle Tommy as I thought he was. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's not He's not coming off to me like that anymore. Okay. So I can see him and Tasha, and she's liking the attention. Then we see Keisha rolling a blunt. <laughs> and she looks very comfortable with that, like she's done yeah. it a few times before. I ain't never do it, but she looked, she knew she, she, what she was doing. And Tommy is in a bed beside her, you know, they just joking, you know, kidding around. But when Tommy sits up in the bed, y'all, she asked him about Holly again. And, well, she did ask him about her shop, too. She right. wanted to know about her shop. Right. And he was reassuring her that he wasn't going to lie. It's, it's going to be hard as hell. But he was just like, Tasha's smart. She got this. And I got you, so right. everything's going to be okay. And it's going to eventually go back to the way it was. And he tells her to trust him. So then that's when she goes in and asks him about Holly. And he's like... So in, in the preview for episode 5, um, right. if, in that video, if you guys haven't seen that video, please go back and check it out. And I was given my predictions for episode 5, which most of them were wrong. But <laughs> I enjoyed the video. And this, this episode, I don't care that it was wrong. This episode was... It was, it was jumping. Yeah, it yeah, was it was jumping. lit. It was definitely lit. So it's that's why he had that look on his face when he sat up, and he was just kind of like in a why daze. Why did he bring up Holly? Man? Yeah, and then he talked, and he true Tommy form. He just played it off. He talked around like, "Was you saying something?" And she's like, "Oh no, no." And I'm just like, "How many times you gonna let this guy just like dismiss stuff and not yeah. even say anything about it?" But I think in that moment where she she's she's already realizing that Tommy's not really on the same, not wanting what she's wanting as far as the relationship. True, true. So she's really starting to see that, y'all. Y'all, from there, Proctor is walking down the street and Tommy rolls up on him, yokes right. him up, yep. throws him against, ah, the wall. against that wall. Yeah. <laughs> and Tommy is like, why didn't you tell me you got kicked off the case? Does it have something to do with the guy from Homeland? Proctor's like, no, 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 it has nothing to do with that. And Tommy's like, what about them closing down the weave shop and closing down Truth? And so they're having this discussion and Proctor's... Um, Proctor sitting there wondering, what you, what you talking about the weed shop? And then Tommy had to come clean now. Yeah. He said the weed shop there to clean my money. Right. And he's like, wait a minute, you're telling me Tasha knows about this? And this is, they had never disclosed this to Proctor before. Right. So Proctor is finding out that Tasha actually is an accomplice to all of this stuff. And then Keisha's also involved. Right. So he's like, man, man. And he's he said, just like. Now, now they're thinking that, okay, they barking up the right tree now. They they, they got yeah. everything all hooked up. Got the got the balls rolling. Know where all the money's coming from. Yeah. So he, they, 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 they going after him. Right. So, so Proctor like tells Tommy. If, they, if she goes down, everybody's going down. That's what he said. And so Proctor telling Tommy he got to go, and he's just walking away shaking his head like, man, what am I going to do to get them out of this mess? Right as Proctor is walking away, Tommy gets a phone call from Pitar, and Pitar is wanting to know uh, what's going on, you know, the people from Chicago, as he prefers everybody in Chicago, right. they're wanting to know what's up, what's the deal. And Tommy, he just doing like he's been doing for weeks. He's trying to reassure him, I got this, everything's under control, we're going to be moving this stuff, don't worry, the um, product's going to be moving soon, I got this. Now, this next scene, I was blown. I did not think we were going to see Simon Stern's ass again. 
What? Where did he even come from? Why is he I, still showing up? I'm like, as soon as Ghost is walking out, and they, you can obviously see that he has a visitor. When he comes around that corner, and I see that white hair, I'm like, like oh. He looked at him like, I don't even want to see this guy. It, I don't know, Ghost. If I was Ghost, I would have turned right around and walked back. I'm like, really, yeah. Stern, really? So he gets on the phone with Ghost, and he he just bullshitting them, y'all. How they treating you in here? You know, how's it going? How's it? Look, right. get to the bottom of what you want. You Why are you it. here? <laughs> yeah, why are you here? So Stern is offering him to um, offering him some finances right. to help him out financially while he's in there. And Coast is like, nope, don't want it, don't need it. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Click, good. we out of here. Right. And I just knew once we saw Stern, I knew that wasn't gonna be the last of him. And nah. we and my whole thing is, what is his motive? I'm like, Ghost does not want or need to get in bed with this man ever again. No, like no. really, no, no. This, th that's gonna be some balls, some it, ball. It, it was hard. It was it was hard and a little tedious for him to get out of there. Yes. Once he signed up with him the first time, now here here he comes back again. Yes. You and a ghost ain't falling for that. He's definitely not. Right. So in the next scene, Brock, Proctor's having lunch with his daughter, and he's spending some quality time with her, and she's asking him, you know, he's usually working. You finally have time for me now. Like, what's going on, Dad? Why aren't you at work? And he explains that he made a mistake at work, and he's off the case, and he's gonna have more time with her. Right. And in walks Angela. Yes. Yes. So Angela tells Proctor, you know, I looked at the surveillance cameras and you were like, you were right. Ah! Yeah. Like, really? Yeah. And Proctor's just like, I told you. So. so she said, well, did you tell, tell your people? And she said, yeah, I told them. And he said, I told you. They said, they said don't worry about it, right? Don't don't use it, right? He said, yeah, that's what they said. And Proctor explains that they, they, don't, they don't care and they don't want to see it because all it's going to do is draw suspicion towards the prosecution. And they don't want that. Right. Proctor um, suggests that Angela go talk to James herself, and he says he'll go ahead and call Silver. So the funny thing is, though, when Angela goes to leave, she goes to reach out for Proctor to shake his hand. He looks down at her hand, and he's like, yeah, effing right. <laughs> <laughs> no love. Yeah. You didn't get no love over nah. here. And the next thing, y'all, Keisha is helping Tasha pick out clothes, and they just chatting it up, you know, yeah. talking about the outfits and whatever, and Tasha's telling Keisha she had to pay cash for everything, blah, 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 but she's going to leave the tags on it. Right. So Tasha, you know, Keisha's feeling real comfortable, so she gets this text, and she looks at her phone, and she's like, like, she got an attitude, and Tasha's like, oh, that's not who you wanted it to be, and Keisha's like, Ugh. and she's like, well, hold up, you know, you know how when you girls but you know how girls do you know you you know when your girlfriend is messing with somebody new and she's like what, what? Ain't saying nothing yeah <laughs> what's this all about so Keisha starts running her mouth a little bit and she told Tasha a little too much y'all I didn't see this coming I don't think she, she said one word that dropped the dime on everything a white <laughs> like really like how many white guys with flavor is running around like like Tasha's like the only one we know is Tommy and Keisha's just like looks up and she walks away and she's like so which one of these black dresses you gonna wear again like I said last time I never lie Tasha like <laughs> Uh, but the interesting thing about this is not only did Keisha tell Tasha that he the guy is white she says I'm catching feelings for him which is stupid because I don't think he feels the same way so that was also important yes. Tasha's like yeah mental note right y'all in the next scene we see that Angela goes to the prison to talk to James again and Silver is sitting there and she straight up asks Ghost, she's like, the fingerprints that were left outside of Greg's window, yeah, right. are those yours or were they planted too? The Ghost had to look at his lawyer to make sure he was right. able to answer this question. Right, he so. looked over at Silver, <laughs> Silver's like, Go ahead and answer you that. may answer. <laughs> <laughs> so Ghost was going to explain to her that, yeah, they were my fingerprints, but I went there to, because uh, he heard that Greg had some evidence uh, that Lincoln and her to be in the mold. Right. So he went there looking for that evidence. Yeah. So he's telling Angela, I went there to protect you. And he's like, you know, when I was there, you came in and you were asking Greg how to go with MJ. And Angela's just like, so you went there the whole time? He's like, yeah, yeah I was in the bathroom. I didn't say anything. 
the pit so they're looking at the pictures and ghost shows angela that this phone that's in this picture it was not there when i looked in that drawer and she's like whoever is the real mole and whoever killed greg they planted this phone. So, so then Silver just straight up asked Angela, what can you do for us? Like, why are you here? What is the reason for your call? And so she gives them a nugget. Well, she, she tells she them. She pauses for a minute because she's trying to figure out what she want to do with this. With the, what, 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 what can she give them? Yeah. I'm going to give you a gift. Because she, she's <laughs> turning on her, on her team now. She, yes. She's jumping ship. So she gave them a nugget and she's like, okay, in the hearing tomorrow, they're going to say that there was a seven figure check in your account from Tommy <laughs> and it was a murder for hire that Tommy paid ghosts to murder Greg, which is some bull. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Silver is like, okay, exactly. I know what's going on here. So Silver knows that they're going to try to argue a Rico case and he asks ghosts to be honest with him. He says, yeah, that money is to pay for the security firm. It was a loan from Tommy. And Silver's like, you know what? I might have to put Tasha on um, the stand to confirm that. And Ghost, he don't, he don't like that. He don't want wow. Tasha to be on the stand because any lapse in judgment, you say the wrong thing, it can always come back to, to bite you in the butt. <laughs> so our sex scene of this episode, we get to see... Julio and Sue banging it out again. So in the middle of Julio banging Sue, his phone, phone is, is blowing, blowing up. up. <laughs> yes, yes. So he's getting texts less, left and right, and he reaches over in the middle of um, um, giving her some head, and he looks at it, <laughs> and he looks at it, and he's like reading these texts, and he's like, man, what the, what the is Christo doing? So he getting these texts from Callahan, and Poncho, like we here at Crystal Ball is getting extra br bricks. We want in too. Right. And shoot, Poncho's like, we we want in or we out. I, I said that as soon as he said that he's going to give Crystal Ball them extra bricks, dude, that's going to come back and bite you. You yep. can't give nobody yep. no extra bricks. Yep. And Sue was like, hey, Crystal Ball's been hanging around the block, um, hanging around the club a lot. And Julio's like, truth? And he's like, yeah, he's been in there talking to Dre. So Julio's like... Will's the turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's out and he leaves his girl hanging. He's like, I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. So y'all, in this next scene, Tommy rolls up in the room with Tariq and he's looking at a piece of paper with Destiny's number on it. I think he wanted to call old girl, check right. on her. And Tommy's like, hey, what's up, you know? Sneaks up on him. Yeah. That's, so, how, that's how dads do. They sneak up on you. Yeah, <laughs> and they talking, you know, and Tariq's like, so Uncle Tommy, um, when was the first time you had sex? Tommy's like, what? Yeah. What? So basically, Tariq tells Tommy that he had sex with this girl, Destiny, and Tommy's like, did you strap up? And he's like, yeah, yeah, no doubt I did. And he's like, yeah, you always strap up. But he's questioning him about it, and he's like, well, where, what, where was this at? When did it happen? And he's like, oh, I went to a party with Dre. Tommy's like, with Dre? Yeah. Bad mood now. Everybody's lying. This is what's going round and round. Everybody's lying. So, y'all, from there we go to the courtroom scene, finally. Yes. And Tasha's walking in, and she has Tariq and Raina with her. And she whispers to Silver when she walks in. She's like, I need to talk to you before I go up there. And she's like, there's something you need to know. And Silver, there's no time for it. The judge is walking in. It's time to get started. Right. Right. So, of course, the prosecution that goes in, they're submitting their evidence. They're talking about the seven-figure check that from Egan. And they're saying it's a murder for hire, possibly. And, of course, Silver's like, uh-uh, that's not going to fly. So, he calls Ghost to the witness stand. Well, when you get up there and say, he you call your first witness, he said, I call, and you seen Tasha's face. She's like, ah, I can't do this, I can't do this. And when you said, St. Patrick's, she was like, what? <laughs> yeah, but anyway, Ghost takes the stand, and, you know, he, he was, they they really did a good job of coaching him up to this point. Right. And, you know, he's, that man can hang a suit. What can I say? So he has his little nice suit on again, looking <laughs> good, Ghost is back. So, you know, he's talking all calm and confident, being ghost like he normally does. Right. And he's saying that he had to borrow this money from his boy Tommy because all of his liquid money was tied up in his deal with the Bassett Hotels. 
So, you know, he's looking good, sounding good. And um, all the right answers. Yeah. And he stresses. He's like, hey, look, I'm a businessman. I'm a husband. I'm a father. And I'm a friend. You know, and he, he's, he's doing pretty good up to this point at holding down that image. Yes, yes. Not losing control. Right. Yes. So they take a quick recess, y'all. And here we go again. So Tasha's sitting out in the lobby waiting. And here comes Stern's ass again. Whoa. I don't know why Tasha would even entertain anything this man has to say. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know your husband don't want to get in bed with this man anymore. Why are you even listening to him? So Tasha is allowing him to even have a conversation. As soon as he came in there, I would have straight walked away. I would have went right back in the courtroom anywhere but right. there. Peace. I'm yeah, I don't want to hear anything he has to say. So, you know, he's just bullshitting her, telling him, I saw your beautiful family in there, blah, blah, blah. But he offers her the same deal that he offers Ghost. You know, I can help you out financially if you... So, he just leaves his car up with her. And Tasha takes it like an see, idiot. See, that's, that's, that's the deal. When you, when you work these angles right there, he's working angles with her, trying to get her to start listening. First, she wasn't listening, but when she started throwing an angle about the kids and don't want to see the kids suffer, and that's the one thing Tasha cares about is her kids. Yeah. She don't care about nobody else. It's about the kids. Yeah, and she doesn't have the money for their tuition. Right. And she got to pay it by the end of the week. So, Drake goes and shows, he's showing Tommy and Pitar this underground club that he has set up real quick. Yeah. And Pitar is like, hmm. I don't know about this, but Tommy's feeling it. He's thinking, yeah, he's giving Drake props like, this is a good idea. Right, I can see this right. this working and everything. And Patara's like, mm, I don't know how Scott goes to <laughs> fit about this. He's Tommy sitting there trying to uh, reassure him that everything's good, that everything's going to work out, and let him know, okay, we don't have to run the drugs here, we're going to run somewhere else, but we have people here, we make some money doing, doing everything here. Right, because Patar, he was concerned about security, and right. he was running about the girls possibly running his mouth, but they're like, no, 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 these girls ain't talking, and these guys ain't here, they, they, they trying to get laid, they ain't worried about fighting and carrying on, so right. security's not going to be an issue. So Patar leaves and Tommy's talking to Dre and he's like, hey, what's up with taking Tariq to this party? And, you know. And, and he, he effing some girl. Right, right. Dre's like, huh? Yeah. Yeah. See, <laughs> and, and, and this is the thing. At that point, I thought Dre was going to be like, I ain't take him to no party. Like, what you talking about? But he just, he comes back with, oh, I took him to, I dropped him off at a friend's house. So Tommy's like, so you saying he lying? He said, like, well, I'm not saying nobody lying. Uh, yes, you are, basically, because you're right. saying that's what you just dropped him off at a friend's house. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he's just like, you know, I dropped him off at a friend's house. And Tommy's like, from now on, anything to, um, concerning Tariq, you need to run it through me first. So from there, guys, we go back to the courtroom scene, okay? And this is following the recess, and Ghost is back on the stand, and it's time for the cross-examine. Right. But now... Um, Sandoval is up and he's going to question Ghost and he's asking him about his fingerprints being outside the window. Now, Ghost is doing his very best to maintain his composure, but you can tell he getting a little nervous because yeah. he's starting to, Get you know, pants. yeah, he's moving around <laughs> a little bit, not looking as confident as he was before. But the thing that got to him is like Sandoval says, oh, this was a rookie mistake. And Ghost is looking like... Like, if you only Me, knew. Yeah. Like, you don't about me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, Sandoval starts going over the detail of Greg's murder, step by step, what he um what he thinks happens. Well, it's well, really what he knew, knows happens. We, what happens. But he's breaking it down step by step. And Ghost keeps looking over at Silver like, interject, say something, get me out of this situation, but crickets from Silver at this point so ghost is starting to look down and he's getting this look on his face and his eyes are moving side to side and this is like classic ghost when ghost is getting that look he's realizing something and i think in that moment he's putting it the head to, um putting it together in his head the sand ball is the mole right. because He's a killer. He's killed somebody before. And the stuff that... He killed plenty of people before. Right. <laughs> and the stuff that Sandoval is giving him, it's not just being at the crime scene and reenacting what could have possibly happened. I think he knows that this man knows details. What this person, he looked at you and he said this and then you did this. And Ghost is probably thinking... shot him again and yeah. stood above him and saw him breathing and... 
Yeah. yeah. I think he's kindly putting his hand that this man knows some stuff that just not going to be in some crime scene photos and you're going to get in a reenactment. Right. So after this, the prosecution, you know, Mark shakes Sandoval's hand. They thinking they got it in the bag. Now, got slam point. dunk. We Absolutely. Got this. We got him. Yeah. So Ghost is handcuffed and he's getting, he's walking back out the courtroom and he looks down at his family. You know, Raina is looking up at him crying and Tariq yeah. is looking at him. So well, he just, looks, yeah. And then he looks over to the right and looks at Angela and gives her a quick glance before walking out the courtroom. They go back to the prison and they're ha and Ghost is talking to Silver and Ghost is upset and he's asking Silver, why did you let him call me a murderer in front of my family? In front of my family? Right. And Silver's <laughs> like, man, we knew it was going to be a risk putting you on a stand, but right. it was a risk we had to take. But... You know, Silver reassures him, you know, we're going to have to, uh, it's going to be okay, but we're going to have to bring on more people from my firm to assist with this case. It's going to be expensive. Ghost is like, look, I, I don't know if I can afford this. I ain't got it. I can put something down on it. Right. I ain't got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can, put, I can put five on it. But look, Silver's like, you're going to have to get it from somewhere. So Ghost just straight up asked Silver, do you think we can win? And we don't even get an answer out of Silver. It goes straight into the next scene. So this next scene, y'all, this scene Ooh, was this so... This is the scene that, that I was waiting for because I said he's going to have to fight somebody in jail. But I didn't know it was going to be him. This shit right here was so Ooh. brutal and graphic, y'all. I had to take a leap down the hallway in my Ooh. house and come back. I'm like, what the... I, I almost cut my eyes real quick. I'm like, Whoa, what was that uh, all about? Who out there used to watch this show Banshee? This was that used to come on Cinemax. This was just like a scene out of that show, Banshee. They held back, no punches. Nothing. With this. Oh it man, it was a little sad too, but it was, it was woo. This was hard. It, it was sad because Charlie Murphy is dead, but it it I wasn't sad for the character because he got what he deserved. I mean, they're all in the weight room. It's other um, prisoners in there. They're all working out, and Officer Marshall comes in there, and, you know, everybody starts clearing out besides Ghost. So Ghost turns around, he realizes he's in there by himself with Marshall, and he's just like... I'm going to leave out of here. I'm going to get a body here. Right. So Ghost goes to walk away, and Williams is up in his face talking shit about Tasha and the kids. Yeah. Talking about how, you know, he going to be doing some stuff to Tasha, and he going to have Tasha and the kids calling him daddy. You don't have my kids calling you daddy. That's exactly. the one thing you don't do. <laughs> so what do you get? A chop to the neck. That's the first thing you get. Ah, shut that noise up. First of all, <laughs> Ghost is way bigger than this man. Okay? And he, first of all, them first few blows, I don't even understand how Williams got back up. But I guess for in order for them to do a scene, they had to try to make like Williams try it a little bit. But he somehow manages to not go to the floor, which was some bullshit. <laughs> but anyway, but it was, a, it was a good few minutes of fighting. Yeah, it was it was a good few minutes, but. Ghost picks up a weight, y'all. Oh my God! Ooh. And smashed this man's head. My and head, my head he, hurt for My head hurt for I mean, like it wasn't just like he was probably well, dead the, the after first, the first blow. Well, the first swing when he when he knocked him off of him, that that could have took him out. That's what I'm saying. The first blow, he was dead. But, th but then he decided he gonna get on top of him and swing it a couple of times. This man gotta be strong to grab weight like that and just ha smile. No, he was slamming it and down then, like he, this. He ha. crushed him. He beat this man's head into a pile of ground beef. Mm, crushed it. Like, that was just some old, old, old gory mess, y'all. I'm just like, oh, man. And then after realizing what he did, you can tell he's sitting there like, oh, shit. Like, I snapped. I lost it. And he's just sitting there like <sighs> breathing. And then, then the door, door opens. slowly opens, y'all. And it's Biscuit and Teresi and Biscuit sitting there like he pulled out this like, little knife, but he looking like he on he on short because he's man this coming man blood and he got an officer in the Lord. You want me to kill him? So this well, man, <laughs> if I was Biscuit, I would turn around and ran out. <laughs> that would have been that would have been his best move. But this dude, he's still gonna try to ooh. And stab goes. Ghost grab his good hand. He only got one good hand. So broke, Ghost grab his hand. the other wrist. Right. <laughs> Ghost grab his hand and he's like, no. And he can't get it. He can't get his hand away. T Teresi comes up behind Bissett and just. 
puts him, grips him under his rear neck. Rear naked chokehold. Yes. That's what it is. Rear naked chokehold. And <laughs> as y'all know, that, that mother's hard to get out of. Somebody, <laughs> if somebody ever go to do that, y'all put your chin down. Y'all put your neck chin down. <laughs> Once they get that elbow up under your chin, man, it's almost impossible to get out of that. So he gets him in there. He chokes Biscuit out. And Teresi's like, switch clothes. Because Ghost is still in the daze at this point. And Teresi just takes over. He already know what to do. Yeah. Being the boss that he is, he's like, switch clothes with Biscuit and help me hang him up. We're going to make this look like he a killed him. suicide. Yeah, he's gonna make it, we're going to make it look like he, he killed Williams and then he realized what he did and hung himself. So they go ahead and stage that scene. That's smart. That's smart. Quit thinking. Quit thinking on this you, you know Teresa's probably did that a thousand <laughs> times. He already know. That's how you know. He's like, no, no, no. James Play, what we going to do now yeah. is, yeah. So they do that and they walk out of there. And you know that Ghost is now indebted to Teresi for this. Yes, yes. Once, so, you, once, once, you, once you hook up with somebody like that, you in it for life. Yeah. So from here, y'all, we get we go back to Angela and her sister, and they're just drinking glasses of wine. And you know what I'm saying? Moping yeah, around. She, she's stressed out, yeah. and she's like, she's telling her sister, I took the evidence to my bosses, but they chose to ignore it. And her sister's like, hey, you did what you could do. You know, it's out of your hands at this point. Right. But, you know, she's sitting there like, nah, she can't let this ride. So it's she picks like up I her do. phone, and her sister's like, what are you doing? What are you doing, Angela? But... Angela makes a phone call and she's like, this is Angela. She's like, um, I need to talk to you. And I'm assuming it had to be Silver letting him know that she was coming in. It's either Silver or Proctor, one or the other. But I know she called, she, she, she had to make that phone call. Because I know she was talking, she's been talking to Proctor a whole lot. She ain't never talked to Silver. Yeah, I think, I'm thinking this was probably Silver because right. um, they set up what's going to be played out in another, the next scene. Right. So y'all, from there we get a very, very juicy and emotional, Emotion. it yes. was very emotional scene between Tommy and Tasha. And it was one that I've been waiting to happen yes. since last season. It was very necessary. Tasha confronts Tommy about her suspicions that he's messing around with Lakeisha. And you know he's sitting there drinking his orange he's juice. He's just drinking. I ain't saying a word. I ain't saying nothing. We had to wait until he finished his glass before he, before his I response. Think that's orange but juice. she's like, yeah, he she says she's messing with this new white guy who's hitting it right and I know this can only be you. And Tommy's like, she said I was hitting it right. Right? Man, dude, that that right there Ha, I'm gonna say I'm, I'm gonna step into this one right here. That's me. <laughs> yes. So Tommy explains to Tasha, you know, it wasn't my attention, but it just kind of happened because Milan told me to take care of her, and what I did is I just stashed her away, and you know, it just kind of happened. Three, four, five, six. Yeah. Maybe seventeen. Exactly. Eight, nine, ten, twenty times. Yeah. <laughs> so where it starts to get emotional is Ta Tasha asked him again about Holly. And she was like, you know, I thought you were really into her. Are you going to go look for her? Right. She's out there. Right. With your baby. So Tommy finally breaks down and he's just like, Holly's not coming back. She's not coming back now. She's not coming back ever. ever. And Tasha's like, why, Tommy? And the eye look and she's like, what happened? Yeah. So Tommy tells her, she's like, look, you know, I couldn't kill Ghost, and so Holly did. And he was like, I thought she had killed Ghost, and I had to do it. But he was like, I would have never put my hands on her if I knew she was pregnant. All right. He said he thought Ghost was dead. Yeah, so, I mean, you can just see Tasha's just, like, blown by this. And, you know, oh. she's turning around, and Tommy's just hanging his head in shame, and he's just like, I understand if you want me to leave, but... You know, Tasha turns around and she comforts him and she was just like, I understand why you did it. We're family and we right. have to protect each other. So Tommy looks back up at Tasha and he's like, right. He said and thanks. Yeah, yeah. And, and that, made, that made him feel a whole lot better. Even though, yeah, he killed his girl and his, and yeah. his unborn child. But that made him feel better that she didn't actually hate him or yeah. felt any uh, uh, Ill, Ill feelings towards him because of what he did. He, she understood. Hey, you have to yeah. take care of the family. Yeah, she showed compassion for him in that point, and that right. she she's like, "Your family, we're family." Right. So you know, but she does let him know. You know, you can't. 
you can't walk away from Keisha and break her heart because you don't know what she'll do. We don't know if she'll do if you do that. So Tasha is basically telling him, you know, you're going to have to maintain because, you know, Tommy, <laughs> Tommy tells her he was just like, you know, Lakeisha wants something that I can't give her. And he's like, I don't know if I can ever give that to anybody again. Right. And Tasha's like, but you have to, you know, you got to do it because we don't know what she'll do if you walk away from it. So Tommy's just like, Tommy's like, OK, I got you. And I know that's your girl. Yeah. yeah. He said, I know that's your girl and I got you. So it looks like Tommy's going to keep hitting it for now, guys. Right. I mean, what else he going to do? But at least he can start responding to some of these texts he's <laughs> looking like. He said she's blowing his phone up. Yeah. He looking like, uh, it's her again. Uh -huh. yeah, I'm, not, it's I'm not ready. I'm not ready. <laughs> but if he feels like, if he knows this is the kind of chick she wanted all, she wants the relationship, and he knows he's not ready to do that, or he don't know if he can do it, eventually that's gonna. Yeah, but she already know that he, he he's not into her like she's into him. But, but of okay. course she she wants that she still need that that she 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 want she want Tom. She's still thirsty. Yeah. She's still thirsty. Yeah. Okay guys, so Charles had to walk away and take care of some business, so I'm gonna be doing the rest of this review by myself, so let's keep it moving. So from there, Silver uh, calls another hearing, and he is filing a motion to dismiss the case. And the prosecution, they're sitting there bewildered, like, okay, what could this be about? So we go on, and Silver calls Angela to the witness stand, and Mark and Sandoval, man, they sitting there like, what, what, where's she coming from? And Mark jumps up and he's trying to argue this can't be allowed because she's part of the prosecution team. But Silver's like, hey, 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 this isn't necessary because she is a material witness. So the judge allows them to proceed and Angela takes the stand. So Angela testifies, y'all, that the surveillance cameras do not show ghosts or anyone for that matter planning the gun at Troop and that she took the evidence to Sandoval and he did not wish to pursue it and this is all making the prosecution look very incompetent and guilty and we all know they haven't been doing their jobs for for weeks so this is nothing new and it's just it just goes all downhill from there y'all Mark gets up and he's going to do try to cross examine Angela and at this point he's trying to throw her under the bus because she threw them under the bus and he's saying that you know she can't be a witness because you know she has a sexual ne um, relationship with St. Patrick and Sax comes in and he hands Mark an envelope that shows that Angela had the fingerprints results for 24 hours before she even submitted it into evidence. So at this point, the judge is like, I have heard enough of this BS. What are you people doing? So the judge goes off. He 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 tears Angela a new one on the witness stand, y'all. He's talking about her. How could she sit up here and take her oath? And how can she, she's not upholding her job. And he's just like ready just to throw her out of the court at this point and mock is like yes your honor and he's like uh, uh you i'm not done with you either and he tells them that the whole team is suspended until further investigation so mock at this point he's just like so the judge grants silver's request to dismiss the case and this is for willful misconduct on the part of the prosecution man can y'all believe ghost is free y'all i was not expecting this man for everybody who kept saying that he is not going to be out until the finale or possibly season five man it looks like ghost is coming home and should be home hopefully he should be home by the next episode so ghost is free for now so man, that that was just I had to do another lap, y'all. I was I was running up and down my house all day today watching this stuff. This 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 episode was just great. It was that good. And I don't know if anybody else noticed this, but during the courtroom scene where the judge is tearing Angela a new one and Ghost they showed everybody's face and Ghost is just looking like like, oh my God, I can't believe that she's risking her entire rare to, uh, career to get me off. And they show Tasha, and she's just like, so y'all, from there, Tommy is playing pool at his house, you know, listening to music, enjoying himself. He gets a text, and it's another text from Keisha, and he, he only responds to it, y'all. He's just so frustrated with this girl. He just, like, shakes his head. So from there, Pitar hits him up, and he's like, hey, 
Chicago wants to meet with you now. And Tommy's like, what the? So he calls Grim up and he's like, look, I need a clean car. I got to go to Chicago. Y'all, in this next scene, so we get Kanan's. He's walking through the underground pop-up club that they have now. And he goes in there and he's talking to Dre. Dre's telling Kanan, look. Tariq didn't grow up like we did. He's in over his head. He's lying. And it's only a matter of time. If I notice it, it's only a matter of time before Tommy and Tasha is on to him. You got to stop messing around with this kid. And Kanan is half listening to him, half responding to Tariq as he's, Dre is talking to him. So we all know that Kanan ain't listening to shit Dre gotta say and it's only a matter of time. So Dre comes with the angle, hey, Milan is dead. So the path to you getting back on top it can happen now, and I want to help you, Kanan. But Dre explains to him, but I need you. And Kanan's just looking at him. Meanwhile, while they having this conversation, we see somebody walking through the club, looking through the window at them, and it's Julio. Man, oh man, this part right here, it just made stuff real interesting. Because you know this, you know Julio knows who Kanan is. And... This is the crazy thing. Tommy has already left for Chicago. Then Tommy gave Grimm his phone and was like, keep my phone on. And Grimm is like, hey, well, how are we going to get in touch with you? But Tommy's like, you won't be able to. So Julio can't even call Tommy to be like, I just saw Dre at the spot and he talking to Kanan's ass. He can't even do that because who can get in touch with Tommy at this point? So this is going to get real crazy right now. It is... Julio actually going to be able to tell somebody before Dre or somebody else kills him. We don't know. So from there, we see Angela and Sandoval. They cleaned out their offices and they're leaving out the office building. And they're both in the same elevator leaving out. Now, Angela takes this opportunity because, you know, Sandoval's talking crap to her about what she did today. And she told him, not just in English, but in Spanish, she said she was going to bring down Greg's real killer. And she said to him in Spanish, the truth always comes to light. Angela, 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 you have no idea, my dear, or maybe you do, that you're talking to Greg's real killer and he will not hesitate to come for you next. So what is Sandoval going to do? And is Angela safe? She might need witness protection at this point, y'all, to get out of this because this is crazy. So Silva shows up at Tasha's house again and he's explaining that the judge throughout the charges without prejudice. So what that means is that ghosts can still be prosecu prosecuted later. So he ha he's going to have to be really careful with his activity once he gets home. So Tasha thanks Silver and she's saying that she'll never forget this. But if you notice in this scene and when she was at the court, Tasha calls Silver Terry. But she's very comfortable with calling him Terry. And this embrace that they shared, you guys, and he rubs her hair. He is definitely feeling him some Tasha. And we can see what's going to happen. Now, if, if he is actually going to be her love interest, we should find out in the next episode because it's entitled The New Man. So is Terry Silver the new man? I guess we will find out. Now, before Terry left, he said something very important to Tasha. He suggests that sh they get a floater to hold them over financially until they get back on their feet. So when he leaves out, she goes looking for this card that she got from Stern. And she calls his office. Man, oh man, Tasha. Man, you knew Ghost was on his way home. Why wouldn't she just wait to talk to Ghost and come up with a plan? Now, think about this, y'all. She already told Ghost that he is not to make any important decisions first without talking to her. So why doesn't that apply to her? And why wouldn't she just wait until he got home? You gonna go ahead and drop the gun, jump the gun and call Stern's ass. Man, I can't see how this is gonna end good, but I don't know what she was gonna as stern but if it's for finances the last thing you want to do is get back in bed with this man this is not going to be good y'all now in the next scene ghost is at jail waiting to be processed and teresi's in his cell talking to him he gives ghost a phone and he's like tell tommy egan to call me and ghost is like this is the second time you asked about tommy what is this about do you know his pops or something and Teresa is like, yeah, something like that. So, y'all, obviously, all signs are important to Teresa is Tommy's dad. And maybe Ghost is starting to suspect this. We don't know yet, but it's obvious. 
at this point i believe so ghost takes the phone and i i guess in the next op episode we'll see if he actually tommy does call Teresi once he gets back from chicago now y'all in the final scene oh my god so Kanan goes back to grandma's apartment where they've been kicking it at now for I guess it's been weeks at this point but he goes in there calling he come he's calling Tariq and Tariq's not answering so he rings his phone and jukebox comes from around the corner with the phone now she's telling him you know ghost got out of jail it's only a matter of time before he's home Tariq's in here he's okay for now he's in the other room and he's just like she's like the original plan is back on we're going to try to get this money, and then we're going to kill both of them. And Kana says, what do you need me to do? Now, y'all, I had thought that he made that comment to Dre, which I was very puzzled by because I'm like, why would he be asking Dre that? They showed that scene in the preview. But he wasn't talking to Dre. He talking to Jukebox. And really, Jukebox is the only one that got any type of pull over Kanan at all. Now, I'm just like... This crazy bitch right here, she need to go, and I hope Ghost kills her ass in the same fashion that he she, he did Williams. She deserves a weight to the face. I mean, she got to go, and I, I don't know how this is going to end, y'all, but it's going to get ugly. Now, the next episode should be just as lit as this one, guys, so I cannot wait until next Sunday. So this week what I'm going to have for you guys, we're going to do a couple more videos. I'm going to take a look at the episode 6 trailer and I'll also be posting a video breaking down the trailer and giving some theory talk. We're going to discuss some theories that are out there and make some predictions for the next episode. And I also want to dig into the situation with Julio and if he's going to live long enough to tell anyone that Kanan is still alive. So that's going to get real interesting, you guys. So make sure you tune into our channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe to our channel because we're going to have power is really, we're at the halfway point and the next, the last five episodes, guys, you know, they're going to be juicy. They're going to be good. So hit that bell so you can get a notification when we post the next power video. So until next time, Life with Twinsies, I'm out.